um, with, oh, I guess you've just turned in homework 10, right? So I'll post homework 11. I don't recall precisely. I got a, uh, an email from a student who had an error message as, uh, as he was working through homework 10 related to, I think, the National Land Cover Database. And one of the things I wanted to mention is that sometimes WMS operates best if you save your files close to the root of the hard drive. And, um, and specifically what I mean by that is if we look at the file structure of the hard drive, so like this PC, most of the time your operating system is operated on some, is installed on the C drive, right? Um, and there's all these subfolders. If you are saving your project folder on the desktop, it is several folders buried, like it's in users, and you find the user, and eventually, well, I guess that's, maybe it's because this is a remote profile, but the point is, is if, if you save it in your documents or in your desktop, it's, um, it's kind of buried, and WMS occasionally has problems, and so just my recommendation is if you ever find yourself having an error message, create just a folder in the root of the hard drive. By the root, I mean, so here's C, and you've just created a new folder that's just one level removed from that. So WMS files, for example. And especially when we do the stochastic modeling, which is a repeated execution of HEC1 with subtle variations of things like precipitation and curve number, when you have those repeated calculations, it can sometimes trigger error messages. And so I wanted to let you know that you know, one strategy to overcoming those is save your files close to the C drive rather than buried many, many uh, directories deep. And so like just as an illustration, if we go to the documents, the actual location of that documents is C. <laughs> Don't look at me. It's probably the ventilation. <laughs> 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 That's the heater. All right, well, let's preserve for uh, posterity on the video. Uh, okay, so look, if you're saving something in your documents, it's C, users, wait, Marshall, OneDrive, uh, and there's going to be additional subfolders there. And so if you've got it in a folder, within a folder, within a folder, it gets confused. And I don't know why, it just does. So you can avoid any error messages by saving close to the root if you're experiencing them. All right, so today we are going to get some additional practice delineating a watershed, calculating the curve number, and executing a HEC1 model. Uh, since we've got 30 minutes left, that's plenty, I went through and uh, did that process for this watershed before class, and I think it, it was a pretty quick one. The location is here in Huntington. It's a place called Boji's Gym Nest. Has anybody ever been there before? You went, you went there? Like kids' parties when you were young, right? When uh, did you go there? I go there every week. My girlfriend's daughter goes there. Oh, okay. So she's like in uh, gymnastics? Yeah, she's five. All right. So I know it from when my kids were small, they'd go there for like birthday parties. It's the sort of place where you can do gymnastics or it's just maybe like a fun zone on the weekend, you know, like they got trampolines and a ball pit and all sorts of stuff like that. But one of the things is they've got this creek that runs in front of it. And my kids were at a party one time and they got stranded because it started raining and the uh, creek rose and uh, it was going across the driveway. I don't know the specifics. I wasn't there at the time, but basically a bunch of people were stranded at this uh, birthday party because the grapevine branch came up too high. So it just uh, happens to be a watershed that I've got some personal connection for that reason. So what I'd like you to do is use WMS to identify the outlet location, delineate the watershed, use the National Land Cover Database as your land use characterization. Use Sergo for the soil type. Go through that workflow of calculating the curve number and then executing the uh, HEC1 model. 
So we're just getting repped today. And then once we've got the model set up, and I'm going to do the same thing. I, I'm not going to narrate through as I do it, but I, I will delineate the model and I'll be recording. So if you have a question, raise your hand and let me know. We can overcome the issue together. But I'm just going to show you a couple of additional features that we haven't yet uh, tackled. And one of them is adjusting the job control in WMS. And then the other is something called stochastic modeling, which is repeated execution of the model with variations in precipitation depth and variation in curve number to address the issue of uncertainty. All right, so I'll stop my narration. I, I see computers are out, that's good. So let's delineate this Bogey's Gymnast watershed and see what we get. If you're having trouble finding it, it's off of this Route 10. So here's the intersection of 10 and 64, and then here's the Green Valley Road. <clears throat> Being able to find it's part of the challenge, I guess. I was able to find right where it was by typing in Bungie's Gymnast. Oh, it went really into the search tool? Yeah. I'm, I'm surprised it has place locations well, like that. Here? How about that? Yeah, sure enough. Hmm. I wonder what it would do if you said Taco Bell. <laughs>
All right, so um, one of the drop down boxes here under HEC 1 is job control. And by default, it is doing these computations in 15 minute increments. This is really important, by the way. 15 minute increments, and it does 100 steps. So what you may have noticed is that the hydrograph is kind of cut off at the end. It didn't go all the way back down to zero. So if you wanted to look at what's actually ha happening over a longer period of time, sometimes you may have back-to-back -back storms, for example. It's with job control that you can tell it how long the simulation should run and what is the time step. So for example, I could say I want to do these calculations on 10 minute increments and I want there to be 250 steps. So I click OK and run the model again. And what it's going to do is it's going to step through all the HEC1 calculations another time. And on the same hydrograph, it's showing me my previous simulation and this newer one. And you'll notice that the peak flow rate's a little bit different when you change the time step uh, from 15 minute to 10 minute. Before it was saying 510 CFS, now it's saying basically 540. So you don't want to take it any finer than maybe a 10 minute time step, but I wanted to point out those job control options for you in case you have back-to-back -back storms across multiple days. The way that you would control that is in job control and then the number of hydrograph ordinates. All right, well, that's all the time we have for today. Please get some additional practice on WMS so that uh, there's just nothing but fluid proficiency and no uncertainty. I know it's, it's a weird workflow, but I mean, it's, it's just, that's what you got to do to delineate the watershed and calculate the runoff. All right, that's it for today. I'll see you on Friday.